grew up in San Fernando Valley, out here in LA. And, uh, it was pretty much fresh out of high school, and like uh, I would hang out with my friend that worked at a head shop. And then from him, I met this glass blower that yeah, brought down from Oregon. And just through contact and knowing that my brother kind of jumped into it, and then my friend jumped into it, and then eventually I wanted to be a cartoonist and everything went digital and I wasn't really into the whole digital thing. So that's kind of how I ended up falling into the class industry. Well, I worked for I worked for him about I'd say maybe eight to nine years. And within those eight to nine years I was able to kind of take as many classes as I could and he would pay for them and get in the contacts and everything and make it happen. So through him, even though we only did production, I was able to meet some of these other well-known artists that were doing it more for the art. And then once I didn't work for him, I still kept doing production, but I worked for somebody else. But the production that he let me do was pretty much on freelance. He just wanted to see where I was, what I could do or whatever. And he kind of just let me play kind of freely on the torch. So I went from having to do specific things to just like, here, have some playtime kind of thing. And that's when I kind of like took all those other classes that I was able to take and kind of put more things into practice. I was taking a crucible class out in Oakland and uh, through that class is how I met Hooves and we didn't really see each other until like an uh, AGE show, like a convention out in Las Vegas and we talked about the ladder but it again kind of went for another year and a half or so before we actually linked up and got to work together. But that was also kind of like, that was a time when I kind of held back from either reaching out to doing any collabs with anybody. And uh, eventually, once I did kind of break that seal, then I found the fun in collabing with other people, and I was able to like meet connections to other people that way too. So, it's uh, it's definitely it could be both ways where we both need to find a way to make our styles match mm -hmm. but at the same time I find it a like a learning experience at the same time where I see someone else do something that I might be struggling on or I do but I struggle on doing and then they just open a whole new way for me to actually try it out with their style and it can either be something harder for me or it could be something where I'm like Oh, I just learned a whole new way to do something on this easier way. That's the other thing about this medium is that there's many ways of doing one specific move. There isn't just one way to do something, but different people can figure something out. They could just simplify it for you just by doing that tiny little change. And that's how the techniques are developed in different styles. It's just like zone into what you're doing. It's, uh, literally, you're like battling out with gravity and you're working with fire and you can cut yourself. So, literally, you just want to be all in on what you're doing. And some of it may become muscle memory, but if you turn away or look just for a split second, you can stick your hand in the flame or whatever it is. So, yeah, mainly it's just like you kind of zone in to what you know the glass is capable of doing and what you want the glass to do. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at when I'm like over the torch. Sometimes, yeah, you kind of like joke around and you get into a conversation, but it's kind of like a little in between spots where you take a little breather or something like that, but mainly when you're doing a specific move, you're like in it to win it kind of thing. Um, my worst cut was actually 
I was really fresh on the torch. And it was my first lesson of once the glass stops moving, then don't force it, you know, kind of thing. And I was uh, setting up a handle and it wasn't straight on my claw grabbers and I went to go like just give it the little bit twist. Mind you, I'm a beginner at that point, so my weld wasn't the best either. So by doing that, I kind of just like broke the handle off and went into this kind of motion. And I literally gashed the side of my wrist right here. And that's, that's, hard, right? Yeah, that's been like my worst cut injury. The other one was like a burn, but that wasn't necessarily my fault. That was my friend's torch being a little loose. <laughs> but yeah, that was the other one. Other than that, you know, it's a burn or a cut. <laughs> I take some colors that they put out already, some existing colors that come in like 7 mil rod, and then I pull that down to like, I'd say maybe a 2 to smaller as soon as I can get it and work it, and then from there I'll just take the image that I'm going to actually draw on it, or draw on the actual tube, and the stringers and the colors that I pull down act as if they were like my lead for the pen or the pencil. And fill in the colors and everything so depending on what I'm using it for I'll just pull it down to different sizes. <laughs> I've been uh, actually drawing for a really long time mm -hmm. so it kind of comes easy but let's say if I, you weren't doing a freehand mm -hmm. what you would do is you would kind of like uh, put it on to you'll write everything normal like uh, you'll trace it or you'll have it come out and you'll have everything on the normal spectrum and you'll put it inside the tube and you can take like a piece of glass or a diamond tip and you can actually trace everything onto the glass. You'll slide that paper out or whatever and then you have everything and then you're literally just tracing. <clears throat> but what I do is I do everything freehand and I just look at the image and I'll literally flip it while I'm looking at the image backwards. Um, at that point, I'm just drawing things out versus actually writing things out. Yeah. So, you, so you, you were drawing way before then you started the black hole? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, drawing since I was in third grade. And then eventually, through my drawings and stuff, you know, I met this guy that kind of introduced me to glass. And he kind of just kept pushing it on me and saying, like, you need to try this. You need to try this. And Who was that guy? Was it like someone big in the industry or was it like a uh, he, He's been in the industry for a really long time, but he tends to just do pro work. He's okay. not too into the arts of it, but so more like, like on the money. There's two kinds of glass artists. Right. We always say that there's the businessman, and that's the guy that does like just production tubes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's the guy that's in it for just for the money. Right. And then there's like some of us did decide that like we're gonna go the extra mile, mm -hmm. but there isn't like a guarantee that this is gonna be something that's gonna sell or make us money in the end. Um, well, I took a class when I was apprenticing, apprenticing under the guy that taught me how, and. Uh, there wasn't really anything that I can apply it to at that time. So I kind of honed it. And then uh, maybe about four years, maybe, I'd say about five years back, like my market for the sculpted stuff I was working on kind of slowed down. And I just slowly kind of practiced that technique that I had already kind of learned from back in the days, but I hadn't really like kind of centered it in I hadn't really like actually perfected it and then kind of just seeing how the market was I wanted to try something new and just put it into practice and my drawings went from like having super thick lines to just practicing and practicing and bringing the stringers smaller to where now I can get some like really extra detail on there but yeah it's just you'll lose a lot of them in order to get the ones that you want and yeah at this point now it's like I could get them on the first try where before I take yeah a couple of tries I'll have something break on me I'll have to start over but that's kind of the name of the game it's all like a learning process
much as they, we feel that they could be pushed at at this moment, you know? So, yeah, that's, that's the greatest feeling, just knowing that what we kind of had in mind is actually there. I'd say take as many classes as possible and then don't let your little small failures discourage you and the most time behind the torch will be the one that makes you better. Like don't don't take it like it's a hobby if you're really trying to be serious and do it. If you want to take it as a hobby, then that is what it is. But if you're taking it as a career, then like, you know, kind of like a pilot, the more time behind it, the better you're going to be at it kind of thing. You're uh, 10,000 hours or so? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 18 years now behind the torch and I'm still learning. <laughs>